This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Wednesday, February the 20th, 2019. Today is the feast day of the child saints of Fatima, Francisco and Jacinta Marto. They were the cousins of Lucia, to whom was entrusted by Our Lady all of the teachings and the secrets associated with the apparitions. The two little children, though, were an heroic example of repentance, prayer, and particularly penance. Little Jacinta's life of prayer and penance is very well documented. She fasted very frequently, and when someone would offer her a sweet or a prize, she would accept it eagerly, as all little children do, and then immediately she would stop and think about poor sinners, as she called them, and she would either return the sweet or she would give it to someone else. She was the first to die from illness, and her brother was soon to follow. The two are buried across the aisle from each other in the pretty church in Fatima, only about a hundred yards from where they knelt on that cold and rainy Saturday in October in 1917, when 75,000 people gathered in a muddy field under the watchful eye of the communist government and watched the sun dance for 10 minutes. They were beatified by Pope St. John Paul II on the 19th anniversary of his assassination attempt, and they were canonized on that same day, the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima, May the 13th, 2017, by Pope Francis. In 1792 today, U.S. President George Washington signed into law the Postal Service Act, establishing the United States Post Office Department. The U.S. Postal Service actually got started as an effort to make newspapers more broadly available so that U.S. citizens would be informed and that the news would not be able to be censored. As with all things early American, Benjamin Franklin was a key player in bringing together other people's ideas and making them a reality. Researchers have claimed that the widespread availability of newspapers at the beginning of the U.S. contributed to a high literacy rate in that country. Finally, today in 1902, Ansel Adams was born. He's a bit of a strange bird. Adams was born in rural California, and he had the habit of lugging very heavy photography equipment miles and miles into scenic mountain landscapes to find the perfect photographic composition. What makes Ansel Adams remarkable, though, was his profound attention to the way that photographs were captured, exposed, and developed. And even more than attention, his understanding of the photographic process. Adams pioneered what he called the zone system. When he composed a photograph, he identified 10 discrete tonal ranges from full exposure to full shadow. His photos then were set up, recorded, developed, and printed with a sharp eye to these tones and the way that those tones interacted and arranged with one another. And that's what makes an Ansel Adams photograph so dramatic. The rivers and the mountains and the trees and the highlights and the shadows are infused with a real sense of drama because of the way that he captures and emphasizes the tones of those colors into that black and white or sepia masterpiece. Adams lived until 1984 to the age of 82. He was a prolific photographer, perhaps the first true master of that art form. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.